When you see news happening, let us know. Grab your phone and hit record and become part of the New Cap News team. It could make you $100 richer. If you capture news happening, drop us an email at tvnews at newcap.ca. Well, the use of drone technology in agriculture is increasingly is increasing in the Midwest, especially as you can now purchase one with all the bells and whistles right in Lloydminster. Gerard Lampau finds out why we're set for takeoff. They're used for field scanning fields to detect insects. Moody's of Lloydminster is partnering with CNH and Drone Deploy to supply the Phantom 4 in the Midwest market for just under $3,000. It literally flies itself. One guy had hail damage on a crop, uh, scanned his field, sent his uh, prescription off to Drone Deploy. Drone Deploy came back with it, sent it to the insurance guy, and the insurance guy looked at it, analyzed it, phoned him and said, this is what we're paying you. Nobody stepped foot in the field. That's a game changer when you consider short staffing and thousands of acres to examine. Then there's the scouting aspect to detect areas that appear stressed due to bugs, identifying crop variability, plant health and yield analysis, and as well variable rate prescription. Yes, so rather than walking the whole field, you can go and walk 10 feet where you got the bad area and figure out what's going on. Maybe you need to spray, maybe there was no fertilizer, maybe it was drowned out. It's hard to say, but you at least got the spot where you got to go out and look. The drone has sensors to detect objects so it can avoid bumping into things by maneuvering 50 feet clear and then continue on its flight plan. You go and you make a map in the Drone Deploy app and then you can go out and you go through your settings and then you can hit uh, fly flight pattern. The drone lifts off to three feet, does a flight checks, and rises to 300 or 400 feet to perform its programmed flight. When the battery gets to 20%, the drone lands itself for replacement. A battery, depending on conditions, can last 20 to 30 minutes. A software subscription of about $1,200 will get you up and running. There's some apps in there that you can use. We're just starting to get used to these apps. Uh, there's a cattle finder one. Uh, they, there's one that will count your livestock for you, one that will detect your grazing patterns for the cattle guys. King says they're just touching the surface of what it can do. Gerard Lampau, Newcap News. Well, a new group is looking to set up in Lloydminster with the goal of spreading wealth to local charities. The 100 plus women who care is a group looking to join the likes of many across Canada and the United States. We are hoping to get 100 women or more together so we can have a big group of women put their $100 three times a year into a charity that we would vote on. And that money would be donated directly to the charity. And we're hoping to have a really big impact of what we can do with a big group of amazing women in our community. Right now, the group meets at Integra Engineering in Lloydminster, but with the amount of support they've seen, there might have to be a change in venue very soon. While we've had an amazing, amazing support from our community so far, we've had overwhelming responses to um, our Facebook page, and we're hoping that we'll have a bunch of women come out for our, our information night. The official information night for 100 plus women who care is scheduled for February 8th at the Stockade Convention Center. Well, there's one last chance to check out the production of James and the Giant Peach and the annual one day ticket sale for the Dreaming Out Loud Children's Ball is this Saturday. Here's Heather Cleggis with the details in what's happening. <music> Maybe it's riding in a classic car like this that is a dream for you. Well, a lot of dreams are going to come true at the Dreaming Out Loud at Children's Ball. It's coming up in May in support of the Lloydminster Interval Home. Tickets go on sale tomorrow, a special early bird ticket price, and you'll be able to take advantage of that tomorrow morning from 9 until 11. Just stop by the Lloydminster Exhibition Association to pick up your tickets and to support a great cause. 
Tomorrow night, it is the annual Telemiracle Steak Night here in Lloydminster, a great fundraiser hosted by the Lloydminster Kinsmen and Canets. You've got another opportunity to support Telemiracle coming up next Saturday, February the 10th. It's Marshall Telemiracle. They're going to have delicious food, a great auction with Cal Donald, then some great live entertainment featuring the Prairie Dogs. If you want to get tickets for that one, you can stop by the Marshall store or the Marshall Town office. This weekend, we've got a really cool CD we want you to win a copy of. It's Luke Bryan's brand new album, What Makes You Country. It includes his hits, Light It Up, and also his latest song, Most People Are Good, and a personal favorite of mine, Drinking Again. If you want to win a copy, it's really easy. All you have to do is email your name and daytime phone number to tvcontest at newcap.ca. We want to say thanks to John at Universal Music Canada for setting us up with the hot country music. And the Lakeland College of Performing Arts has one more chance for you to check out their production of James and the Giant Peach. It's on stage at the Vic Juba Community Theatre tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a great one. I'm Heather Clegis, and that's what's happening. This is New Cap Sports. The Junior A Bobcat success train just keeps rolling down the tracks days after Kobe Walker signed his commitment to the Rochester Institute of Technology. Another Bobcat player is reaping the rewards of his hard work and great play. Lance Phillips shows us who he is. Winning hockey games isn't easy without high-end producers on offense, but equally important is the play of a team's goaltender. And the Bobcats have received plenty of good work in that department. So much, in fact, that starter Bailey Birkin was named AJHL Defensive Player of the Week Monday. I just hope to be able to stop every puck and just give our team chances to win. I mean, I know the boys are helping me do that too. They're letting me see a lot of shots because I know if I see the shots, I'm going to stop them. So if they let me see the shots, I think we have a pretty good chance of winning every night. The Fort Mac game, I thought he played really well. He was the difference in the first period. You know, we came out, not flat, but they came out and they, they took it to us. They had some good scoring chances. Uh, but that's why you have a, you know, we have two good goalies here. That's why we have them, right? They're, they're part of the team. They're a big, huge part of it. Two games, and then he's got player of the week. He speaks a lot. Uh, you know, he's sounds like he's been pretty successful up in the WHL, too. So, uh, but no, he's a tremendous goalie. He moves the puck well. Uh, our D love it, you know. he's uh, It's always nice to have a good puck moving goalie back there. And, uh, yeah, no, he's, he's been very good for us. It's Birkin's second stint with an AJHL club, but his first being recognized by the league for his body of work. It feels pretty great. I mean, last year we played, I played on a struggling Mustangs team and stuff, and I averaged 50 shots a game. But after two games, it feels good to finally get some recognition on my play. The teams with good goaltenders usually go far. And, uh, yeah, when you have good goaltending back there, like you said, him, uh, Sanders, Pierce as well, uh, they're, all, they're all great goalies, and uh, they all they give us a chance to win every night. In two games with the Bobcats, Birkin posted a goals against average of one and a 971 save percentage. Numbers that earned him two wins and the respect of his peers. With the goalies we have, the guys play with a little bit more confidence and more, not relaxed, but, you know, they're not scared to make a mistake because they know our goalies are going to, you know, make a save for them if they do. So you just see it in their play. They're more relaxed out there. And, uh, you know, I think that's the biggest thing that the goalies bring to us. Lance Phillips, New Cap Sports, Lloyd Minster. The Lakeland Wrestlers volleyball teams take on the Nate Ooks this weekend in what is collectively the biggest weekend of the year thus far. Here's Josh Ryan to break down the stakes for both squads. For the first time this season, this weekend's matchup is significant for both Lakeland volleyball teams. That's largely because the women face their first true test in league play since last semester. Nate came closer to creating a blemish in the wrestlers' perfect season than any opponent thus far, pushing the nation's top program to the brink in a 16-14 Lakeland victory back in October. Head coach Austin Dyer says facing the division's top teams is perfect for the squad as they prepare for the postseason. Good competition is going to be exactly what we need. Uh, having to, to fight for points and uh, fight to, to win a set and or potentially to win a match. Uh, having to come back and, and uh, make changes within a game when a team is beating us. That's, th th those are all parts of, of competing at the highest level. We need to be 
figuring out what our top level is, and uh, it's best to do that as the season's winding down here. The men, meanwhile, come into this matchup needing at least one win to keep their playoff hopes alive. This is a tough task against an Ooks team that's won 10 of their last 12 and hold a size advantage in every position. However, the wrestlers can draw on their improved play over the past two weeks. We just have to make sure that uh, we're, we're making good decisions when we're attacking and, and not hitting that, hitting it into the block. We uh, maybe recycle a couple balls. Um, I don't think they play super good defense, so I think making them have to, to, to chase balls down, uh, make them have different looks every single time that we go up to, a, to attack. Now, if the men can pull off a split or better, they'll still need the Ooks' help moving forward. Nate plays the Kings Eagles next weekend, which are the wrestlers' final regular season opponent and one of the teams they need to vault in the standings. Josh Ryan, Newcap Sports, Lakeland College.